It was a cold Delhi afternoon on January 12, 2018, when four judges gathered together to hold a press conference on the lawns of Justice Chalmeshwar's bungalow on Tughlaq Road. But the message they delivered was colder. The administration of the Supreme Court is not in order. There are many things which are less than desirable which have happened. But unless this administration is preserved, the democracy will not survive. For the first time in the history of the Indian judiciary, four senior judges led by Justice Ranjan Gogoi openly revolted against Chief Justice Deepak Mishra's controversial decisions in favor of the ruling party BJP, alleging he was picking and choosing judges likely to favor the government while assigning crucial cases involving them. The judges had said in one voice, "I don't want another 20 years later some very wise man in this country." Then the Chalmeshwar, Ranjan Gogoi, Madan Lokur, and Puran Jones have sold their souls. They have been taken out of this institution. Therefore, when Chief Justice Deepak Mishra retired in October 2018, and the new Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi assumed charge, many believed that the courts had found their hero. After all, wasn't it Justice Gogoi who had made this statement? Independent judges and noisy journalists are democracy's first line of defense. Further proving his independence when he ruled against his fellow judges. Retired judges given cushy jobs by the ruling party is a scar on the independence of the judiciary. So it was indeed surprising that when faced with the Rafael case, his first sensitive government-related matter that was threatening to destabilize Prime Minister Modi's first term, Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi, defying the principle of transparency in the name of national interests, ordered. Pricing details should be submitted to this court in a sealed envelope. Then summoning air force officers to the court for an oral interaction that was not put on public record, ruled in favor of the Narendra Modi government, saving it from major embarrassment. During the pendency of the Rafael judgment, Gogoi faced personal charges levied by a junior court assistant of the Supreme Court. Me and my family are being victimized and harassed for resisting the unwanted sexual advances of CJI Gogoi. Lesser men would have faced police FIRs and arrest, as was the case with unsubstantiated allegations against India's pace bowler Mohammad Shami. But with no authority higher than the Chief Justice, Gogoi, after first denying the allegations, got to select a three-member committee to probe the charges on himself. Even though he redeemed the situation by picking two women judges, Justice Indu Malhotra and Indira Banerjee, the accuser strangely refused to appear before the committee, claiming she would not get a fair hearing. Spurning this golden offer led many to believe the charges were cooked up. After a brief probe, the Supreme Court uploaded a notice on its website. There is no substance in the allegations against Chief Justice Gogoi. Case dismissed. However, it curiously denied the complainant a copy of the committee's report. and by refusing to make its findings public did bring the probe process into question the electoral bond scheme introduced by the modi government was another controversial case that cgi gogoi presided over it appeared that electoral bonds were a loophole especially created to funnel unaccounted cash to political parties without ever revealing the identity of the donor the decision on the legality of such methods was crucial to the bjp because of the 2410 crore the party had raised ahead of the 2016 lok sabha elections 60% of it was through electoral bonds other parties also raised large percentages of their donations in a similar way but even put together their amounts were nothing as compared to the bjp when a petition was filed against the use of these bonds all political parties must submit details in sealed covers before the next lok sabha polls And though the wordings of the order implied that the matter would be decided before the next elections, it was kept in abeyance and never heard during his tenure as Chief Justice. Maybe he felt that the matter, like the lynching of Muslims by Gaur Akshaks or the scrapping of Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir, were not important enough to warrant the busy court a day. In both of them, he said the same thing: it does not require urgent hearing. Further, in a blow to judicial transparency, sealed covers became the hallmark under Chief Justice Gogoi's tenure. The National Register of Citizens (NRC)'s case decision was also marked by a sealed cover. In CBI Chief Alok Verma's case against the Modi government, the Central Vigilance Commissioner was asked to give its report to the court in a sealed cover. While passing judgment on Prime Minister Modi's biopic to be screened just before general elections, the Supreme Court asked the Election Commission to watch the movie. and submit its report in a sealed cover 
courts have to give reasons for their judgments if the evidence on the basis of which judgments are delivered is kept hidden then it is not justice his final act before leaving was settling a 500 year old dispute by handing back the ram janmabhoomi land to hindus fulfilling a key promise of the bjp's election manifesto even so many were still surprised that within just 4 months of his retirement he was nominated by the president of india ramnath kovind to become a member of the rajya sabha as opposition benches shouted shame shame what happened that a celebrated chief justice had to bear such public humiliation under article 80 clause 3 of the indian constitution the president can nominate 12 people as rajya sabha members but only those having special skills knowledge or practical experience in either literature science art or social services none of which really the former chief justice has being in the judiciary his entire life his one time revolutionary partner kurian joseph part of the four who had rebelled against the then cgi did not mince his words i am surprised to see how justice kogoi who once exhibited such courage of his convictions has compromised his independence and shaken the confidence of the judiciary but gogoi defended his appointment legislature and judiciary must work together for nation building article 50 of the indian constitution however clearly states that two must remain separate indian judiciary must be independent of legislative and executive some judges have gone into politics post retirement but after contesting and winning elections chief justice of assam guman mal lodha thrice won lok sabha elections on a bjp ticket after his retirement justice k s hegde two fought elections and went on to become the lok sabha speaker from janata party Justice Krishna Iyer became law minister of Kerala post retirement in the first communist government of the state headed by EMS Namburipad. Chief Justice M Hidayatullah went on to become India's sixth vice president 9 years after his retirement during the brief time Charan Singh was prime minister. But two retired judges were nominated by the government in power just as Gogoi was. MC Chagla, former chief justice of Bombay High Court, served as India's ambassador to the US. Though he had the integrity to stand up to his benefactor Indira Gandhi when he was one of the few judges to have opposed her emergency. Ranganath Mishra, former chief justice of India and uncle of the recently retired Deepak Mishra, who presided over the 1984 riots case in Delhi, was seen to have let off the Congress lightly and appeared to have been similarly rewarded with a Rajya Sabha seat. Baharul Islam was a Congress appointed Rajya Sabha member in the 1960s before being appointed Chief Justice of Guwahati High Court in 1972. Being a congressman previously, it was no surprise that during his tenure, he let off the then Bihar Congress Chief Minister Jagannath Mishra in the Patna Urban Cooperative case. After he retired, he was rewarded with a Rajya Sabha seat all over again. However, other than Baharul Islam, they all became Rajya Sabha members several years after retirement. Unlike Gogoi who was nominated within just 4 months. In recent examples, Justice P Sathasivam, India's 40th Chief Justice, was nominated as Governor of Kerala by the Modi government after the 2014 general elections. Ironically, it was the late BJP leader Arun Jaitley who drew attention to how pre-retirement judgments are influenced by post-retirement jobs. There are two kinds of judges, those who know the law and those who know the law minister. Almost 70% of judges accept some kind of government position post retirement or are appointed to commissions that last several years and are often quite lucrative. Argya Sen Gupta, author of The Independence and Accountability of the Higher Indian Judiciary has found 37 of 50 Supreme Court judges who retired between 2002 and 2012 took post retirement jobs from the government. Surprisingly, the person the four justices had initially rebelled against, Deepak Mishra, never took up a government position but works in the private sector on the boards of various companies what happened in the past is no justification for what has happened with gogoi gogoi's appointment has shown to the public that judicial independence is questionable and unfairly puts the spotlight on decisions taken by his successors baseball's limerick there was a chief justice called ranjan gogoi some of whose decisions could seem like a ploy it may be untrue and that he didn't do But his appointment so soon could his credibility destroy. Subscribe to Bizbo and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever Bizbo releases a new video. Sources of all our information is listed in the video description section.